so let's see what all the the changes we see in next 13 we have already talked about documentation and we have explored a couple of features now let's do all these things together what we are doing is these are the the four or five main improvements or you can say enhancement and then we will go one by one okay so app directory this is in the beta and uh, now they have introduced the app directory same as the pages and whatever the component and the routes you are creating inside pages in version 12 now the same you can create in version 13 like this is what you are doing in the version 12 now you are just going to now you are just going to use this app directory inside that you will create a folder and then the respective pages you will you will put the, all the layouts inside this particular folder so we are going to use the app directory now for the server side components so the layouts layouts is also important now you can create the layouts per particular folder so like this is i'm creating a component inside a app forward slash app that requires a single file page.js page.ts or tsx now you can create a layout like you can create a layout.js layout.tsx and .ts file there you can define how i mean you don't need to have a separate layout okay auth layout admin layout you can define the layout at the directory structure also so here i'm adopting this layout only for the blog route because blog is inside the app directory and then i put a layout.js and the page.js inside it i mean uh, understanding this from the code is very simple here let's see the app there's a blog so what i will do is here i will just do is a page.tsx and layout.tsx so first of all now we are adopting the the app directory right whatever we were doing in the pages now that's no more there i mean um, in the pages we will still use for the api routes but for the app directory we will just use the server side components and the routes like blog and blog is ad adopting this layout and this page when you hit forward slash it will use this page.tsx and you can also introduce a layout for this because layout okay layout is already there i created it so inside app also we have a layout so when you hit a forward slash then this layout will be used with for this particular piece like this component whatever it is it is going to render here right in this root layout component and then for the blog you can define the same children and the children will render this layout i mean inside a layout you will put uh, this dot props of children this component will be rendered inside so this server component is really an important change with the app directory so app directory introduces this new type of component which is a server and a client component okay and we will talk about it what is server and what is a client side component and what is the difference so by default if you are not using the client side stuff like managing the state and all then you can just uh, create a simple server side component otherwise if you want to use the the redux or state management and the hooks then it needs to be a client component client side component okay then streaming streaming is uh, another a nice feature with the server side component with the nested layout sometimes you need to stream the data and you need to show the loading state right because the data is coming over the time through the apis and all so there are two new changes you can show the loading state by creating a loading.tsx or the error.tsx to create an error boundary so there are two new files are there in the folder like here you can create a inside a blog i can create a loading dot tsx and the app okay data fetching data fetching is now more simplified i know in the react uh sorry in the next 12 we were using a lot of concept even if you look at the documentation today get server side props get static uh, paths and uh, i mean let's say because it's all ssr server side rendering and how it works is if i just try to explain it through some diagram this is going to render an html from the server so there are two possibilities either when you and the, here is your client which is requesting the pages and let's say this is your browser let's say i'm looking for forward slash uh, blogs right this blog route there are two possibilities if you just make it and if you are making the page whole dynamic where in that case when you are sending the blog request at that moment only server will wait for fetching the data from some external api let's say there is an external api from where you are fetching the blogs 
okay it will fetch the blocks and once the block is available and the whole html is ready then only it will send the html back to the browser it is the, the method is get server side props right so it will execute and compile and wait until you get all the data and then server build the html and then send back that html to the browser we can just do a get data and uh, it will await before getting the data this is a server component so there is a major, major difference sometimes you will get confused okay in the react we are not doing something like this but if i need to do it in the react and react coming to the picture only at the client side so you talk about the, the different concepts of the react let's say i wanted to manage the state so this is a react because react is available at the client side so all the things okay using the hooks here i wanted to use hook redux toolkit all the concept of react can be introduced only at the components which is marked as a client side and we will see how we are doing it i am going to show you a simple example this component is created inside a app directory but this is not a server component server side component because i'm using this special tag use client and once you do it you can do it's like a plain vanilla react component for you and then you can use hooks state management everything you can do in that component but you have to declare it as a use client if you wanted to make that as a client side component because then only you can use a state management and all but if you are using a server side component you don't have a liberty to use all those features if you see this server component it just uh, fetching the data and making that data available okay so this is the major difference and if we talk about this then you will understand it more what is the the major difference server and the client component allows developers to build application that spans the server and the client so it's like a rich interactivity is being provided so these are called react server component allow developers to blah blah i'm not going into the documentation so here so app counter.js first of all this is the counter.js you are creating inside an app folder but i need to explicitly declare that this is a use client so that i can start using the use state use effect use callback use memo all these different hooks in the component so you only need to mark a use client so that you can use these uh, react synonyms and you will see it, it 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 works perfectly this table is really important because this is a uh, next 13 and people will confuse to see these two type of components when it comes to fetch data server components are good because this is uh, how we are fetching the data okay i will show you this snippet yeah this server components when it comes to fetching the data server components are the best and now I, i'm coming to the table again accessing backend resources directly yes i can do it in the server components this is what uh, this is why we are using this server side technology because if i'm creating because here there are two type of components uh, we have server side and client side i mean they both can exist inside an app directory but if you want to uh, use that only for client purpose then you have to explicitly explicitly mark that as a client only if it is a server side obviously it's not going to be uh, used at the client side i will be just doing a data fetch and all and here you can use let's say prisma or a database postgres or something because prisma allows you to create a client this is the prisma orm and it gives you simple prisma client Prisma is really a powerful ORM for the Node.js and TypeScript. Here server side components can directly deal with the Prisma clients to fetch the data, insert, update, delete. Okay. I mean, um, Prisma is an ORM, not the database. It's going to deal with a particular database, right? So these are server side components. What they are good at? Fetching the data, accessing the backend resources, keeping the sensitive information like API key, secret and all you wanted to do not want to expose them to the client side obviously make it in the server components keep a large dependency and reduce the client side code because they, if whatever you are putting inside this that's not going to be that's not going to be available at the client side client side bundle 
so that you can do api interactivity of obviously i cannot do this on click on uh, on change and all because that's a client side that's a behavior of the browser i cannot do that in the server side components and here comes our client side components you can use the lifecycle management hooks and redux toolkit state management everything is possible at the client only component we can use the browser only api only or the client components use custom hooks obviously available in the client component right so here this is the important part server side components are available for these four things accessing the backend resources database uh, doing a sql query or doing some special operation which requires api key or access key or secret key fetching the data that's also important how we are fetching the data through the server side components you can simply do a sync await i mean i have never seen for, for us it looks like you are writing a react component but obviously it's not you cannot fetch the data like this in the react component it's like a page component server component and you are just doing await gate data which is going to resolve a promise and return us the data right so data fetching is now more simplified i know i i have used a, a next 12 version and i didn't like these different separate methods get server side props and get static paths and all now it's more simplified if i need to fetch a data i will just make it available through the server components and now this you can render i'm just using this async await and all these things and there is a new powerful api use is a new react function that accepts a promise right so coming back to this uh, people will can do the mistake like importing the client side component into into a server component that's not possible because client component there is the client component and you are trying to import maybe a server component inside it like this is a server component that won't work because server is only to deal with the server side client is only to deal with the client side and here for any component which you want to use at the client side you have to explicitly mark it as a use client otherwise you can't use the the react features there like hooks uh, state management and all the the basic concepts you cannot use in page.js this pattern works you can pass a server component as a child of a client component okay that's a good thing yeah this is a client components too and you are able to pass a server component inside it but the the otherwise is not true coming back to our original things okay this is how we are doing data fetching on the server components so this is important part client side component and a server components coming to data fetching we are good and then streaming introducing a turbo pack to just uh, webpack has been down it's like a webpack we were using earlier and still we are using webpack a lot in angular react world create react script also uses this okay other changes are just api level like in the next image or next link that you will understand when you are using it what are the improvisation they have done next link to link a particular page in the next 13 this is how we were doing in the 12 in the next 13 link always renders anchor tag okay that's fine i mean you need to render you need to do it like this otherwise but link itself is render rendering the anchor tag so you don't need to wrap it inside the anchor tag mm, basic uh, enhancement middleware api update and breaking changes let's not talk about them coming to the documentation part again uh, how we are doing it so here these are the fundamentals uh, I mean, I have covered a lot of things on on this and reading the documentation is really fun. You can you can skip this video if you want and just read it how we are creating the, the layouts and the routing. So let's say this is the app and inside the app, you can create this folder structure and you just can just create this kind of layout. OK. In the layout, you need to just always aware what you are creating a client side component or a server component, because if you are creating a client component, then you have to mark all of these as a use client as a use client right because these are all client components but when you want to access the database resource fetch the data then you can just create a server component and this is how you create a route segments just uh, put the folder inside folder and put your components inside that now uh, are some file conventions uh, this is how we are using it like let's say page.js it actually inside a folder we are creating a page.js.tsx it creates a unique ui route and make that path available 
okay layout it's create a shade ui it's like a layout we are creating it renders the component inside it loading.js it's create a loading ui like you can create a skeleton loading and then you can use a react suspense to render this loading with the react suspense uh, hook error.js not found and all so error.js is it introduce a react error boundary loading.js works with the suspense you can see here you can see here error boundary so it, let's say it's a my root component or root layout what i'm doing is i created an error boundary fall back to the error component so they, they, there i will create an error page and if any error boundary occurred like any error occurred inside the children's it will render the error page suspense before rendering this page component uh, if there is a, some async task happening then it you can render the loading you can use the fallback to the loading and similarly if there is any error boundary here it will fall back to the not found so you can create a nested of error boundaries and all so you can see here uh, what we are doing in the dashboard this is really nice to understand i mean the documentation are lo lovely i was impressed like how clean and nice documentation next js team has created this is my root layout okay inside that layout i have an error on loading okay i can create an error boundary and a suspense if anything asynchronous being done inside the layout i have like let's say settings page so settings will be uh, can have its own layout because it's another folder it has its layout it has its own error page it has its own loading state and it has its own page so this is how the layout looks like okay and this is this looks really impressive when it when we just see it from the top so in addition to the special files you can create a any kind of a, okay my dummy name.js because these are the components you can create a client side component with any type of name it's not like you need to create only page.js loading.js error.js you can put any file name just you need to worry about okay because that won't become a page route that is just a helper component inside that directory and you need to use a client only this is the the partial rendering this is how it can happen because now we have a loading state okay advanced routing patterns and all defining routes uh, i have already covered and coming to the api route uh where can i found you might have used the pages directory earlier right so we have two two important things app and the pages so we will be using pages directory to create an api route so if I want to create an API like forward slash API user, that should give me some data or allow me to post some data. You will put that user.ts inside an API. I mean, somewhat the changes are the reflection of what we I have seen in the Swell Kit. But I think now Next.js is doing good in some part of it by introducing this loading state, error state, error boundary, and loading state with the suspense API. Really nice okay server and client component we have already seen static and dynamic rendering because it's not like okay the each and every page is static there can be a dynamic route so how we can get access the params coming from the dynamic route and uh, render the appropriate page these are the route handlers list items the route handlers you can create a custom request handlers okay that, that is uh, i think new thing these are the route handlers so inside app also you can create an api route handlers which can handle your get put post request like static route handler this is a get it is doing nothing but it is just rendering the data and how you will access it it will expose an api i mean this is just returning the data to you okay so route handlers are only available inside the app directory they are the equivalent to the api routes which are there in the pages directory we don't need to use api routes and route handlers together that's fine if i wanted to render a static json like some blogs json i can just use api routes for that otherwise i can just use the these uh, page level routes which i'm going to define inside app directory and routes.js and ts and i can just define a get request and i, I can access this data through the routes so let's say this is like you are getting some dummy products you are passing the API key and then you can access this data in your components. Okay, uh, you cannot have two both the things together like the routes and the page. 
redirecting to the static data and the cookies also like if you are defining the routes then this route is having access to the request so you have the access to the cookies so let's say if you want to make a request to external api passing the authorization header you can do it by accessing the cookies okay lots of things and i wanted to skip it let's see that in the demo pages and the layouts we have already seen how we are defining the pages and then their respective layouts data fetching so i think of it this is the important part another data fetching we have already seen some part of it uh, how we fetch the data in the server components this is server components and you can just use simple async await to fetch the data so in server component functions you also have access to uh, request and cookies helpful functions and uh, okay because and the, the server side routes sometimes what happens is how you manage the session session with the cookies so you always need to have an access to the cookies in the server components so you can get authorization header and you, you can check the user session is currently active before reading or re getting the data from database uh, you can make the sequential calls because now it's all uh, asynchronous thing we are doing openly so you can just use async await and use promises to run things parallelly get artist get artist album these are the two promises and this is a server components getting the username from the params i got the username and then i can fetch the data for it and render this component inside the uh, server component i can render my album component and this is my album component this is how it looks like it is just rendering the data sequential data fetching this is all concept of how you can fetch the multiple requests together in the sequence okay mutating streaming and suspense api getting static params api routes now i won't go much into the details uh, let's see a simple example here we are using just a simple this is like a simple to do app okay and here i'm just using most of the components which are actually client side components but we can also create a, some server side components and can do the routing and all those things let's see in this this is like you can say a first hello world app we are creating with the next js 13 and then i'm going to create another app where i'm going to use server components to access the database through the prisma now let's do some hands-on to understand okay what is a server component and how we are doing the data fetching how we are de uh, duplicating the requests which are happening in the multiple components because now next js is doing caching so if the same request is being fired from multiple components it caches the request using fetch apis okay all these concepts we are going to take a look let's say this is the blog okay i can just uh, do npm run dev it is it takes time when i compare it with the next js and svelte kit uh, it's still not closer to that it took some time and then i'm doing npm run dev okay so inside a page directory i created a route blog and i have a page.psx there on the app directory i have some components already created so i'm, I'm just going to play with the blog so this is a simple server component you can see and let's say this is a server component because by default all the components are server components so this is really a bold move from the next js to create by default all the components are server based so that all the code is getting rendered from the the server side most of the code of code compilation and the execution happens on the server and we should be able to ship the minimal code to the client so whatever the execution happening at the client side using this the, the logic we are executing with the help of react library the the whole objective is to reduce the the bundle size which is being rendered from the server side let's say if i want to do the data data fetching all these kind of operations i can do in the server component and in the server component i cannot use the the huge state and all let's say let's say count and use count so there is a tag which we are adding use client oh i forgot it so this is what you need to add at the top that means now it will render fine right this this has now become a client component so this is the major difference if you want a server only components 
do not use it by default all the components you are creating inside the app directory are server only component there you cannot use these all the 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 react logic of managing the state and uh, additionally data fetching from somewhere and managing the state using redux toolkit or redux you cannot use it and you cannot have access to the dom apis or the web browser apis of doing on click on key change on key up you can just do just data fetch or something like this so here without this what we are doing is we are doing nothing it's just a plain simple function and on top of that you may write some code which is actually fetching the data let's say we can write a simple code here i want to fetch a data right and i can just do simply get data here const name equal to await get data export default now it become a sync function right and we can print this name somewhere right this is what a server side component can do they are good at fetching the data here we are just returning a promise right so now if we let's see the dashboard data simply it is resolving the promise i mean it's a simple async of it but now you are able to do it earlier if you remember we were doing it if you want to fetch the data in the server side components then you were using these different methods which if you remember get static props get server side props all these methods you were writing so let's say if i want to do the same thing in the next 12 how we were doing it so first of all we were having a page directory pages uh, we already have and inside that you were creating a component let's say form dot and this was becoming a route and you were writing something like this get server side props and this data now you are making you are making this data available to the component like this right so whenever you reload the whole page then it everything gets executed everything will be executed once it will not re render even a single piece from the server side until unless this promise is resolved and you resolve and you give the data to the client i mean it's like a pure synchronous view of fetching the data and compiling the page and sending it to the client this is how we were doing earlier but now things have changed we have a server based component but this is how it is going to work this is like a synchronous component which can fetch the data and you can also have a loading state which uh, we don't have right now so what you can do is you can simply create a loading.ts file loading.tsx so what this uh, loading.tsx file will do it will help you to show the message it will give you the proper asynchronous behavior let's say i'm just adding this loading component and this is my page.tsx what it is doing is it is waiting for a promise and we also already created a loading.tsx this is all about streaming and fetching the data in the server side components this is a server side component already because it's not a client only client side that's why it is server side and we are just waiting for this promise so if i just try to reload this you can see loading the dashboard this is really amazing feature i will say because here now what we are doing is we are streaming and fetching the server side data in the component so we have this loading state similarly we can also create error.tsx so these are like some of the, the good changes i will say in the uh, next okay so uh, we talked about a server component and a client component if you want to make a client side component then you just have to use this uh, particular attribute on the top to make the component look client use client so if i want to make this as a client then i have to declare a use client okay okay now next thing is now whatever we are going to do is let's say i'm going to just build my whole app the client uh, with the client components because because it is react heavy i'm going to use a state and all then you just declare on top cli use client and then you can just use the use state use effect use memo and use callback all these kind of folks you can just you are free to use that okay so the most important part is inside the app whatever you are creating by default are a server component only including all the files the test style or other component tests etc 
this way why why we are doing it because we wanted to improve the performance and we wanted to render only the minimal bundle at the client side okay before next year we were doing it uh, things using a uh, lot of different methods to even fetch the data like now we can talk about the data fetching patterns we were using get static props get server side props to fetch the data at the server side and if you want to fetch the data at the client side what we were doing is inside this component this is the client only you can write a use effect and make X, xhr request through that and that will make your component uh, client side only and it is fetching the data from the client component only because first the component is getting rendered then it is getting compiled on the browser and then you are making X, xhr request through with the help of these react lifecycle hooks and all okay now uh, the important parts we are going to talk about is the components are asynchronous now so i will what i will do is let's say i am just uh, creating a post directory and inside post directory we will play with some examples so uh, component server.ts here i'm going to create a couple of components okay next i'm going to talk about asynchronous component and uh, how we are dealing with that so let's say this is a post and here uh, i have one server component just a simple function which is where i'm going to load asynchronous component i mean till now we heard about just a synchronous component i mean i mean we haven't even heard about what is asynchronous component in old world component were purely asynchronous you couldn't wait at the top level in the component but in the the next js next js 13 all components are by default server and those can be asynchronous so it's like a beauty added in the server components that they can be asynchronous finally we can we can use just async await inside a component and can return a async function async component so here this, this is just an example i'm trying to put so this is a server component and this code code is just another component which is uh, another making api call and getting the uh, random uh, code from this api it's just giving me the promise and if the promise is resolved it is going to give me a single code by default the delay is uh, zero second so here i can just pass if i want to make it slow if i want to make it slow that means slow is true that means i'm going to send a 200 uh, milliseconds of delay delay two seconds delay so i have a two components one is will do the fast rendering another will be a slow okay but both the components are async which are getting rendered on this parent component so there are two async components being rendered inside this server component let's see how it works so here i will try to just reload this and you can see i mean it is not going to return me until unless both the promise are resolved so there are actually these are two components one is slow true let's say if i pass this is a false then it's not going to wait that much time it's loaded right just in right in second but if i try to make it slow true it will add a two seconds delay but here both the components are not independent right now there is no delay then the code should render right just right away but here i'm saying passing slow true that means it will render after two seconds but let's see what is happening when i reload okay it is waiting the it's like a blocking the rendering of the both the components so how can we make a uh, independent asynchronous components so i mean you can use suspense this is suspense api from react import suspense from react you might have used it uh, at many places in earlier version of react and here we'll just wrap this around a suspense so we'll just make this component asynchronous independently so i will do is suspense and i will rent put this code component inside this and another is this is slow rendering i mean i will pass slow true okay now these components should have become independent because they are being handled with this suspense hook separately 
So if I just try to render it, it's loaded. And on the second one is still loading, right? Now both the components are independent. The first one is uh, loaded right away. And second one, it is still taking two seconds of time. So this is how we can deal with asynchronous components in the server component. By default, uh, whatever the component we are creating is a server component only. Here you can see inside a post phase.tsx, this is a server component. Another thing which we can talk about is the so there are these are the two APIs, right? Uh, I can talk about this how the data fetching is happening. So let's see. So another important aspect we I'm going to talk about is uh, how it is do duplicating the fetch requests because here these are two independent components making the same request, right? And both are returning the same request, same uh, code, even if you just try to do the random. So if we try to see this in the network tab, I mean, we won't be able to see it because it's not happening at the client side, but in the server side. Okay. So what this means is when there is the same request is being triggered from uh, multiple components in the in the tree, what will happen is it will it will cache it and it will render the same like this. So let's say there are two components, component A and component B. Component A and B in this uh, app component in the root layout are, are making the same request then what the next JS will do is next JS is going to cache the request. So let's say there is a request A which is being made here and request B which is being made from this component and request C is being made here, right? So these are two, both the requests are deduplicated because it will cache the request and then it's not going to just send another request of same type from the next JS server component. So it's like we are caching those kind of requests. So it's like an, you can say an enhancement or uh, so we don't need to fetch the same data in the multiple components again and again. It's uh, it all because it enables the caching at the fetch request level. So it, it maintains the temporary cache. So you can understand this is the next JS 13 version uh, implementation. Now, uh, next thing I'm going to talk about is simple streaming and fetching in the server components. So let's say this is blog. Here I have the loading state and this is my page component. Right. So if I just hit the blog, what is happening? How this loading is appearing? Because Nest.js uh, 13 supports the streaming and loading. That means whenever it sees the asynchronous operation going on in the server components and there is a loading state already available, then it will render the loading state for duration for that particular duration and then it will render the component. Okay. So this is a simple example of the server side uh, streaming and rendering the loading state, right? It's like a streaming and fetching the data in the server components. So maybe this data can be anything, right? The server component, the main objective is to fetch the data. So this get data is fetching the data. And meanwhile, there is an API call which will take time. So we can just put a loading.tsx. Here we are not putting any suspense or anything. This is inherited automatically. It will check, okay, this is a promise. It will take time. So the loading will automatically come into picture. So this is like, uh, this is how it happens in the server side. I mean, in a server component, this is how we can show the loading screen while the data is being prepared for the rendering from the server component. Earlier, there was no such concept. Uh, if we want to do the same thing, same concept, because this is a server component. There is no client only is uh, written here. Use client is written here. This is a server component and this is fine. I can have a loading.tsx and page.tsx server component and it will start working. Let's say uh, I have a client component. So let's say I'm putting any random folder, random directory. And here I want to have a same concept, same, same, same stuff uh, happening here. So what can I do? I will just try to copy both the things inside this random folder. 
loading screen is fine page.tsx inside this page this is use client now this has become a client component and i can use use state uh, all the cl real client side concepts i can use but it will it won't happen if i just try to do random it will throw a runtime error right so what can we do i mean in the react component you cannot do it like this either you just need to put it inside a use effect so that when this component renders and uh, first of all this cannot be this should not be async this page dot ts for default okay get data here we are calling get data export default function page this is synchronous function and we are making a call get data and get data is returning a promise okay uh, but it is getting resolved after these three seconds so first of all we cannot use await directly in the client component client only component so what is the solution i cannot just make it async there is a hook provided by react which is use this is how you can do the same thing uh, in the client component so what i need to do is import a use from react it's a wrapper on top of maybe a fetch okay now i'm trying to have the same concept here but at the client side no this is not a server component this is the client component here i'm loading the page it is showing the loading the dashboard but how that is happening that is happening because we are using this use hook that is new here and this is the react client component next yes client component so this is how we can do the streaming and fetching the data in the client component now this this api call get data can be anything right we are using this appropriate hook and whatever we were doing earlier by while doing a use effect or some life cycle hook now you can do the same with the help of use a hook with the help of this this function is not async but it can it can call a function which is returning a promise and then you are getting the data properly and this is acting like a react component you can have other uh, uh, react hooks which is use state use effect use memo use callback I mean the full fledged all the react features are enabled in this so this loading.tsx is not a client side or server side it's both it depends on what kind of component you are writing if it is a server component this loading.tsx will play its role without even specifying these use hooks it will check okay uh, you are doing some asynchronous operation in the server component it will render it okay so this is pretty much about uh, the basic examples how we are fetching the data what is a server component what is a client component why we should use why the the next is focusing more on the server side component and executing more things at server side how and now as we are using uh, next 13 we get rid of all the earlier methods which we were writing with the help of get server side props get static props i didn't like these much these uh, particular methods to fetch the data uh, before the component renders uh, fetch the static data and then compile the page and send it to the server now i think the more beauty has been added in the next js overall we will keep exploring more features but it's time to write some small level application and then do the things let's say if i am talk about the simple example of to do app what it is doing it is using all uh, server component for the client component so this layout is a client component and because i have to use a use client because in this layout i am putting the specific things like the providers this provider is nothing but a, the react Re react redux provider and then i'm rendering the children so this can be rendered or this can be executed only at the client side on the browser because we are using redux toolkit here i think we are using some store somewhere like here i have a root reducer configured a store and then uh, i have a root state and dispatch these are the hooks which i'm dispatching i mean it's just a simple example how we can do a simple to do app so all the components here the page.tsx it is using use client and already we have already are, are using redux uh, a 
provider at the layout level so in the child components we can actually access the state and we can dispatch the action to the redux toolkit here we have a slice this is store this is the hook and uh, somewhere we should have a store so this is redux toolkit slice here we are doing a to do slice how we are mutating the state and these are all different actions okay so from the page.tsx we are rendering these two components they can dispatch and they can access the state in their components using these state hooks okay i mean it's just uh, not an example of a next yes it's more about uh, how we work with the redux toolkit and all so i'm skipping that we just need to more focus on how we are writing a server components what they can do and how we can write a full fledged application because now with the layouts nested layouts are there how we define the error boundary how we can show the loading state of a particular container which is being loaded all those concepts are really important that we are going to cover in from the next video